I have a food baby and a baby. <laughs> I just ate, so mm, my, my tummy's happy. Okay, so this is gonna be um, my diary for the first trimester. I'm gonna be 14 weeks in two days. So I can officially say bye-bye first trimester. Um, and I'm really happy that I did a diary because I forget really easily. Like you forget child uh, birth labor, birth pain, labor, pain, what am I saying? You forget how painful it was, you know, quickly. So you tend to forget a lot of things as a human, especially how painful something is or all your symptoms. So I literally wrote it every week what did I feel this week? How did I feel this week? That way I can inform you guys. And because with Lila, I really, <laughs> my updates were not that great because I felt nothing. Like she, it was funny because I was telling my midwife, she's like, what do you mean? You weren't nauseous at all? I'm like, no. She's like, well, nauseous is a good thing. It means, you know, it, it reassures you that your baby is thriving and doing well. And I'm like, well, when you put it that way, like I don't mind being nauseous anymore. I was like, but I never felt it with Lila. She's like, well, how, well, how did you get reassurance that she was okay? I'm like, my ignorance <laughs> for not knowing that I guess I was like I don't know <laughs> um, so with Lila I literally felt nothing with this one there's a lot that I felt and a lot that I googled and Google just scared the shit out of me so I'm here to tell you a lot of what we feel is pretty much normal all right so we're gonna talk about week three to five which is before I even knew I was pregnant I was crazy I'm not I'm chill baby right you, yeah. you would say I'm a pretty chill person. Yeah. I don't freak out. We don't argue <clears throat> that much. <laughs> like, we, we never really argue. Um, so I'm a pretty chill person, but something was going on, and I could feel that I was off. So <clears throat> first thing, extreme emotions. I started noticing it with Netflix. We Netflix and chill every night. I would cry at any show we would watch, and I'm like... Okay, so I get it. I'm usually an emotional person if it's a sad situation, but why am I crying for everything? And then I was crying in bed for no reason. Like I literally had no reason. And I would get frustrated because I'm like, why are you crying? Like what is the logic? Are you depressed? What do you, what do you feel right now? And I had no answer. <laughs> so that was scary. I mean, I didn't like something help, was so wrong with me. Didn't have the movies we were watching that would make you cry either way. Yeah, but it wasn't even related, though. No. And then I would just cry while working out, which is the most random thing. I'd be doing leg day, and I'm just tearing, and I'm like, what the hell? I mean, so, to me, it was the more the argument. When I was agreeing with you, but you were still getting mad. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to agree with me, and I still wanted to get pissed. I remember that. I wanted a reason to get mad. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, I was angry, and you were just like, what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> that's not the woman I married a uh, severe blow like I just remember looking down and just seeing my belly so big and not knowing that I'm pregnant I'm like what the what is this what is going on you know and I told him he was sitting by me I'm like look at this it's insane I was like huge remember yeah it was bad like Lila was questioning me the most then and I'm like <clears throat> I work out I sweat <laughs> I don't know what's going on uh, loss of libido this is a little TMI. We are very close. Active. <laughs> active. <laughs> I'm trying to say it. Like, you know, more clean kind of. And we're active. Uh, we've always, we've been together for 14 years. That's a part of me that, you know, like I, I enjoy it. And to me, it tells me that our relationship is going strong. And if we're not having it, something is wrong. Um, and it's just... It's my, ha it's our happy place. We de-stress and that's where we get to really connect one another. So that was something we did daily. And I was like, no, I don't want it. I mean, I still did it, <laughs> <laughs> but in me, I wasn't enjoying it. You know, and I was like, what is wrong with me? And eventually I just told him, I'm like, I have zero craving for this. Zero. Like, I don't want it at all. I'm like, I don't know why, but I don't want it. Did that hurt you when I told you? Because no. we didn't know we were pregnant at the time. No. I didn't? Mm -mm. I was kind of mean, right? I just kind of put it out there. No. I felt not like to I me. was mean about it. Like, I understand things. Uh, <laughs> super demotivated. I didn't want to do anything. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I didn't care to do anything. Um, extreme fatigue. I was tired. I was yawning for no reason. I would wake up and yawn and be like, I want to go back to bed. I'd sleep in, which is odd because I'm usually up working on emails, usually before he wakes up, but now he wakes up before I wake up. So that was like, hmm, something's up there. 
Uh, I did cramp around my expected period and my boobs were extremely sensitive. Like he wasn't even allowed to touch them because they hurt so bad. Um, and I never had any of that with Lila. Then he's like, maybe you should try taking a pregnancy test. <laughs> Cause after all we were trying, but the reason I didn't so soon was because it took me nine months to get pregnant with her and I was afraid that it would be negative. So. I wasn't as hyped up as I was with her because every time I took a pregnancy test, it would destroy me. It would make me feel horrible and sad and, you know, like, oh, another month, another month, you know. So um, I avoided doing that. And then he's like, I think you're late. Just do it. And then I did it. And bam, I was pregnant. I think it, <clears throat> the other thing I noticed was that I was so crazy for your boobs. And I'm, I'm, I'm not I, a boob person. When you couldn't person. touch them. You were crazy for my boobs yeah. when you couldn't touch them. But there was something so about bad. it, so obviously it was building something inside of you. Yeah, yeah, you, you did keep telling me, oh my god, your boobs are <laughs> and I'm not... the same ones I had yesterday <laughs> and the day before. <laughs> and I'm not a boob person. Yeah, he's a booty person. Not that he doesn't like boobs, just yeah. that you prefer booty. Okay, so week five to six, now knowing I was pregnant, uh, lots of crazy bloke. That did not change at all. It was still, an, I looked six months pregnant, and I kid you not, I think I have a photo I'll post it that is like me not even two months pregnant it was insane I just took it for fun because I'm like this is stupid how much I'm showing right now uh, but yeah it was bloat and then it did end up going away um, very tired winded out of breath I couldn't like a walk from my couch to my kitchen left me breathing heavy so that's normal I did tell you guys about that while I was working out uh, pretty bad nausea. I had to stop fasting. This is why I stopped fasting. Some people were asking if I do still fast. No, I wake up, I eat oatmeal right away, um, and then I just kind of eat a snack, and then we eat together when he breaks his fast. That's when I have my big lunch. But uh, that's the way I started to feel better is like constantly eating, but eating small portions. But we noticed that you were cramping, so I'll have you eat, and it will go away. So cramping? Every, well, every time you were... Nausea. Yeah, every time you Nazi. felt sick. Yeah. yeah, then I would eat and I'd feel better. This is like, which annoyed me to a degree because I'm like, if I don't eat, I don't feel good. <laughs> Am I just gonna keep eating the whole time? And it's but hard to understand portions, that. Yeah. You know, you gotta eat small portions. Don't eat high calorie things. Don't chew on a chocolate bar. You know, I, I did a lot of salads. I did anything that could fill me volume wise. Um, like rice cakes. And make me happy. Rice cakes. Yeah. Okay. So something I didn't have with Lila, which did concern me, spotting. I had a spotting like light, light brown discharge uh, which is like old blood uh, when it first happened I wasn't concerned because I'm like oh I heard this implantation bleeding thing you know it's normal it wasn't enough to fill a panty liner either but everything I read online was like don't worry you'll have it for like maybe two days and then it'll go away three days max I didn't have it like that. I had it for like two days, and I didn't have it, and I had it for two days, and I didn't have it, and I had it for two days, and that just kept happening, so I'm like, it's not consistent with anything I'm reading, which scared me. Um, turns out it was fine and normal, so uh, spotting, as long as it's not bright red and you're not filling a panty liner, you're fine. I like, it was just spots, and when I would like wipe, I would have a little bit, but not enough to ever fill my panty liner. Um, dizzy spells. <sighs> That one kind of goes with uh, feeling out of breath. So if I stand up right now, I'll get dizzy. I need to wait. I think a lot of my, it's so intense for me because I have um, low blood pressure. So everything just kind of moves slower. And then when you get pregnant, uh, your blood pressure lowers even more. So I did have it with Lila. I have it again. It's, it's just the way my body works doesn't mean everyone's gonna have it. None of this means everyone's gonna have it. Cause like I said, I didn't have it with Lila. Uh, a lot of this. Foggy minded. I was there, but I wasn't there. I'd be cooking, but mentally I wasn't there. That that was for like a couple days. And it scared me because I kept telling him, I'm like, I feel like I'm not here. Like I'm here, <laughs> but I'm not here, if that makes sense. Um, and then insomnia. That's just week five to six. So I was having a really hard time going to sleep at night. I was tired during the day, but having a hard time going to sleep at night. Uh, week six to seven. The insomnia completely went away. I'm sleeping great at night. <laughs> uh, but I also require everyday naps. I had to take a nap. If I didn't take a nap, I just felt awful. I couldn't think right. It killed me to have to take a nap. I'm not a nap person. You know, I'm always like, if I got an extra extra time in my day, trust me, there's something I can do. I can 
take care of my plants. <laughs> There's always time for that, you know? Um, fatigue, again, yeah. Bad nausea still. But eating frequently helped. I was starting to figure out what foods to stay away from, how soon to eat, um, which was starting to help, but it was still pretty bad around then. Still severe bloat. Seven to eight, I started spotting again. So obviously this scares me. Um, it was on and off just like the first one. I didn't see anyone saying the same thing. And then there was a lot of clear mucus too. Um, so because I couldn't find a straight answer on Google, of course I freaked out. Um, but because there was no heavy bleeding and no pain, I figured I'd be fine. Bloating started to go away around 7 to 8. Like some days I'd have it, some days I wouldn't really have it. I had more energy around that time. Uh, nausea is there, but controlled. Very controlled. Around, around 7 to 8 weeks, I started knowing how to manipulate my body. The minute I would feel ill, I would grab something really quick to eat, which I will do a video um, sharing all the new foods I'm eating because I'm eating completely different now than I was before and there's a lot of snacks I keep in the fridge, low-cal snacks. So I'm going to share that with you guys. Uh, lots more energy. Uh, I already said that. And no more naps. So the naps only kind of lasted a week, maybe a couple days longer than a week and then they went away completely which I was so happy about because I'm like I cannot imagine having a nap every day till I give birth because that would be crazy. Uh, week 9 to 11. Uh, nausea is almost all gone. I do have to avoid strong smells um, and large eating gaps. So if I wait too long to eat, I'll get sick. And if I smell very strong smells, I get sick. If I eat frequently all day, I will not get sick. And if I don't smell anything strong, then I will most likely not get sick. He doesn't wear colognes. Um, I don't eat onions. He doesn't eat onions. Anymore. I've banned onions in our <laughs> house. Yeah. He was a little angry about it. Just in the beginning. Now you're cool yeah. with it, right? Yeah. Like, do I really have to? I'm like, well, because we're eating onions every handle. day. Everybody smelled like onions to me, though. And like, I would go to kiss him and I'd be like, onions! I gotta throw up. <laughs> so I was like, he gave it up for a good reason. Because even Lila, I don't know how Lila smelled like onions. Oh my gosh, she smells like onions so bad. But she still does because we give her that garlic bread that she loves. Yeah. But I suck it up. I suck <laughs> it up for her. Um, so try to avoid smells because if you keep smelling it every day, guess what? You're going to feel like shit every day. And if you keep having that food around you, you're going to feel like shit. So try to remove those things if possible. Um, bloat is gone for the most part. I'm feeling better. Not, not big at all. Uh, frequent urination, which is really, really annoying because like you'd have to go so freaking bad and you would tinkle. It would be like nothing. And you're like, why all this annoyance for nothing? Like every two seconds. I didn't get what that was about. That was annoying. Um, headaches. Started to experience headaches, but it led to also food. So again, if I wait too long, I eat, the headache will go away, but to prevent the headache, don't wait too long. Keep a food diary. Keep track of when you gotta eat, because I know if it's three o'clock and we haven't eaten our big meal already, I get desperate and things get bad. It's good for me to eat by 2.30. Anything past two thirty, and I know shit's going down. <laughs> or I would just bring you food. Or he'll bring me food. Yeah. <laughs> you would get um, annoyed, but <laughs> still lots of dizziness. I recorded this because I wasn't. I was not aware that the dizziness was happening because of the low blood pressure. By then, by nine to eleven weeks, that's when I realized it because I wrote a little note, probably due to my low blood pressure, which lowers even more when pregnant. Hydration can also be a factor. So if you don't have low blood pressure and you do get dizzy spells, keep in mind uh, hydration is a huge thing. So if you're not hydrating constantly, but I am really good at drinking. I'm never good at drinking, but when I'm pregnant, I'm always good at doing what I have to do. You know? If so not, I've been if pretty not, good I'm there. At that. Huh? If not, I'm there. Yeah, and if not, he'll be there to be like, hey, did you drink? Um, so yeah, uh, that's a thing. Energy and motivation started to come back. I did feel better. I did feel like myself. I could go, you know, for walks longer. And I was motivated to do things. Whereas before, I'm like, no, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go anywhere or whatever. Are uh, you going to talk about moment. teas in here or no? Not teas in here. I'll talk about teas with supplements and vitamins and all that. Um, and then week 12 and 13, which is kind of like last week and this week, what I've been currently feeling. Uh, nausea, only with smell triggers. So that's under control. 
Blow, it comes and goes. Yesterday I was bloated for a couple hours, really bloated. Um, and then at times I don't even look pregnant. Like this morning, I'm like, hey, look, no baby. <laughs> um, my tummy looks flat. So it comes and goes. Dizziness, still there. It's probably going to stay with me the whole pregnancy. Uterus pains are more severe last week and this week than they have been throughout the weeks. Um, and by uterus pain, round ligament pain, <laughs> uh, which I couldn't remember in the last video, is like a quick movement to look at Lila or him. I don't want to do it because I'm like going to do it and then it's going to hurt me. Um, but if I turn quickly, uh, it starts to hurt. If I roll in bed, it hurts. If I sneeze, oh my god, my life has ended for like... 30 seconds it hurts so bad even coughing makes my stomach hurt really bad like I feel terrible pulls in my stomach uh, we went for a walk I know my limit now because I could have my uterus started to hurt like I was carrying rocks in it um, and I just told him like this hurts like a bitch we we're almost home but after that we learned not to go that long of a distance um, not sure what that was all about <laughs> uh, but yeah that was the thing um, and then more energy and motivation. It's just getting better. That second trimester energy thing that they tell you is going to happen definitely is happening. Um, I feel like myself. And I don't feel as pregnant as I did in the beginning months, which is crazy. You will start feeling pregnant again once your belly grows. But like now I, I feel normal, I'd say. So I'm up to do anything. So do you guys have any questions for me? Uh, write them down below. Maybe I missed something. Maybe you want to know about something a little bit more in detail. I just kind of vaguely went over everything. That way, if you have it, um, don't worry. A lot of times, it's normal. Things that you do want to worry about, uh, like a miscarriage, that's what everyone's always kind of concerned about. You have to have heavy bleeding for that. So, spotting, even though I spotted so frequently in the first trimester, and like, Obviously, you have implantation bleeding only once, technically. I spotted at least three times on three different occasions, um, and it was on and off, on and off, on and off. So, like, Google will not give you the same answer. Girls will not have the same experience. But if it's not hardcore bleeding and it's, if it's not red, I don't think there's anything to be alarmed about because if you have a miscarriage, it's all going to come out of you. Lots of blood, and then, you know everything else I don't want to go into detail but um, that's when you know you've had a miscarriage and it's painful it's very painful so we like to freak ourselves out about everything <laughs> I did I, I know I did so if I can spare you that um, and, and then even with my midwife she's like no that's crazy yeah you do you will know when you miscarry you will know it's not gonna be a little bit of color on your panty liner especially not in your first trimester but once you hit like after 12 weeks you know you're so much more safe um, uh, miscarriages go down by so much you're you're safe now you know so you can like chill and breathe and stop thinking everything is bad um i will do a next video coming very soon because i want to get this one out there quickly for you guys about um which vitamins i'm taking what extra vitamins i'm taking which are very highly recommended by my midwife what teas she recommended what teas to stay very far away from because i did not know that tea, some teas were harmful i mean i figured the caffeinated ones needed to be a obviously a no yeah, but i found out there was a lot of no no teas which we were have, all in my cupboard yeah. i had all of them <laughs> you name it it was in there and in the fridge too um, so yeah and in the fridge so uh, I'll go over that supplements as well, what I'm taking, what is not safe to take. So I will get that one for you guys out. Uh, comment below. Let me know if you have more questions. I have tons of videos lined up for you guys. So yay. And the guys can, can chime in and let me know what you guys think because this video is for guys too. It's definitely for guys, especially if your girl's pregnant. It's, it's good to know what's going on with her body and be there to, you know, support her. Just, you know, when win extra points for knowing something. <laughs> I would totally be like, wait, what? You know that? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So these videos are for guys too, if they're interested in watching. But anyways, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I will see you guys in the next one. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, uh, hashtag love it. Always hashtag love it. So in case you have nothing else to say, I know you at least enjoy the video. You appreciate it. Um, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.